We're 30 minutes into the U.S. trading day on this Wednesday, February 21st. Here are the top stories we're following. Moment of truth. AI poster child NVIDIA reports earnings after the bell today, and that's after it tripled last year. Why Goldman is calling it the most important stock on Earth. Macro in focus. Meeting minutes due at 2 p.m. today expected to show that the FOMC sees a bumpy ride back to 2% inflation. We'll preview what to watch. And an eye on industrials. Engine maker Cummins sees a downturn in North American heavy trucks this year. CEO Jennifer Rumsey joins in just a bit. I'm Katie Greifeld in New York. Welcome to Bloomberg Markets. You take a look at these markets right now, and we're looking at a down day. The S&P 500 currently off by about two-tenths of a percent, and then the story gets worse from there. You take a look at the NASDAQ 100, currently off about seven-tenths of a percent. And then finally, I make my way to the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, currently off by more than one percent. Of course, that's as we await those NVIDIA earnings after the bell today. Of course, NVIDIA down in expectation, but that's after it's up, what, 40 percent this year already. And like I said, Goldman Sachs called it, quote, the most important stock on earth. And we have Wall Street waiting with bated bet for uh, their earnings after the bell today. Investors really looking to see if the company can hit the sky high expectations it's facing. Joining us now to help break it down is Mandeep Singh of Bloomberg Intelligence. And Mandeep, when you take a look at what's going on in the stock, is there any way that the fundamentals can match? Well, now, in addition to NVIDIA earnings, of course, we're counting down to the release of the January Fed minutes that's scheduled for 2 p.m. Eastern time. And investors really searching for clues here on when the Fed may cut rates. Bloomberg's Mike McKee joins us now from D.C. And Mike, tell me what to expect. So we think about when we last heard from the Fed, of course, that meeting happening at the end of January. We've gotten some pretty significant data points since then there. Uh, Bloomberg's Mike McKee. Thank you so much. And let's keep the conversation going with Steve Sosnick still sitting by. And we were batting around a theory yesterday that you take a look at Walmart's earnings, for example. Of course, the C CFO saying that consumers, they're being choiceful here. They're still spending, but they're trading down. When you take a look at what we're hearing from some of these retailers, and we have a lot more to go, what picture does that paint of the economy for you? Well, investors aren't the only ones waiting with anticipation for this minute's this afternoon, rather, Fed Minutes CEOs looking to get a better read on the economy. They're also paying close attention, of course, to the Fed's upcoming rate cutting cycle. And pl I'm pleased to say that joining us now is Jennifer Rumsey, Cummins CEO and board chair. Of course, Cummins, a top manufacturer of diesel engines used in commercial trucks, off highway equipment, and railroad locomotives. And Jennifer, I'm really pleased to have you here because we talk all the time about technology, about, of course, the financial economy, but you have a very unique view on the physical economy. When you think about what's going on there, what's your outlook for 2024? Start with the supply chain. Like you mentioned, of course, you've seen that unsnarling over the past couple years. But are you seeing any complications from what's going on in the Red Sea, what's going on in the Middle East when it comes to your supply chain? Yeah, the supply chain has really improved. The Red Sea, of course, when you think about the past couple of years, the pandemic experience, I mean, there's been a lot of talk, of course, um, across industries about nearshoring, friendshoring, onshoring. How are you thinking about that? I mean, Cummins' strategy has and continues to be strong across segments. But I want to talk particularly about the North American heavy truck market. Of course, you're forecasting uh, a bit of softness there. I believe you're projecting a 10 to 15 percent decline when it comes to Class 8 production this year. What is leading to that? I mean, how long lasting would you expect that to be? Yeah, I mean, the conversation, like you said, you're still investing heavily, even with this uh, downturn scene. I know that you said that you're already proactively taking some cost cutting uh, measures in anticipation of that. Could you just walk us through what you mean by that? Is Cummins thinking about layoffs, for example? Yeah, we did a the, uh, heavy truck industry there. Is there anything that distinguishes this cycle from previous cycles that you've seen? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, this cycle did not from the Fed policymakers built on that soft landing. But let's talk a little bit more about battery cells. Of course, you're uh, also investing heavily in electronification, alternate alternative powertrain technologies. Talk to us, though, about demands. Is that transition to zero emission vehicles taking longer than you expected? Or what sort of timeline are you thinking about here? Yeah, we're paying comes to buses and, of course, the charging network that exists there. It makes a little bit 
more sense than perhaps some of those personal vehicles. But I do want to talk about China before I let you go, because Cummins, it has a relatively high exposure to China relative to maybe some of your peers. There's been a lot of hay made, a lot of concern about the Chinese economy. We haven't quite seen that rebound that maybe was anticipated last year. Now, uh, a lot of weakness, uh, if you want to call it that, so far this year. What are you seeing in the Chinese economy? How confident are you that maybe we're approaching or have already seen a bottom? Yeah, you know, we really saw the bottom back conversation. Appreciate your time, of course. That is Jennifer Rumsey of Cummins. Now, let's zoom out here and get a check on these markets. We're going to do that with Abigail Doolittle. Well, the tone remains a little bit risk off. Abigail Doolittle, thank you so much. And before we get to those NVIDIA results coming up on this program, Jason Furman, Harvard Kennedy School professor. All right, it's time now for Wall Street Week. And today we're looking at the strength of the U.S. economy and what to anticipate from the Fed. Joining me now is Wall Street Week host David Weston and Jason Furman, Harvard Kennedy School professor of the practice of economic policy and former Council of Economic Advisors chairman. Certainly a heavyweight when it comes to <laughs> economics, David. Certainly something we both pay attention to every time he writes something. Thank you so much, Kate. As we try to make sense of this economy, that is Harvard Kennedy School professor Jason Berman. And David, what else do you have coming up on Wall Street? Tomorrow we've got Josh Friedman of Canyon Partners uh, to talk about Distress Invest PM Eastern Time. All right, so a lot to look forward to there. Those conversations, of course, in Wall Street Week. This is Bloomberg. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the stocks hitting highs and lows. We have Diamondback Energy, Kristen Bitterly, Citigroup Global Markets, Head of Investment Solutions. She